time. Four Iranian boats, look at them there, caught on camera, coming just within 300 yards of a U.S. destroyer in the Persian Gulf. They backed off finally after several warning sirens and flares were sent off. And 10 hours of carnage finally over, gunmen storming the American University in Kabul, leaving at least 12 people dead. The attackers setting off bombs and spraying bullets, sending hundreds of students running for their lives. The attackers believed to be members of the Taliban and were killed. And he took money from the state of Minnesota to fund a trip to go and join ISIS. According to prosecutors, that guy right there, Mohammed Robel, took $91,000 in settlement money from being hurt in that bridge collapse in Minneapolis. Remember that? And then he used that money and headed to Syria. They believe he is using it to help fund the terror army. Great. Meanwhile, switching gears, the housing market is constantly changing, and your real estate questions are starting to pour in. Here to tackle viewer emails, the host of The Property Man and Fox News legal analyst, Bob Massey. Hey, Bob, great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with Adriana. She says the HOA has, How long is this exactly, has split into two phases, and the issue is complicated, she says, but bottom line is we have... No, we have no say in anything. It appears family members are on the board, no meetings. So what can we do? How do you answer? Yeah, you know, I actually called her. When I get certain emails, you can almost feel them reaching out. So I called her and talked to her. Long story short, when, you, when there's a development, Ainsley, until that development's completed, the developer is what we call the declarant. They literally... They own, they do everything with the HOA. And then when it's all finished, there's a board elected. In this case, it was split into two phases. What I told her when I spoke to her, I said, look, you need to get a competent lawyer to look at what's going on there, putting family members on the board. Doesn't the optics of that does not look good. She's concerned she's making payments for two phases, not getting what they're supposed to be getting. And it gets very complicated as it relates to what powers they have versus what powers the homeowners have. So I directed her to get a competent lawyer. I gave an idea the kind of person they need to look for to really look at this complicated issue that's much too difficult to handle over an email. But when the developer is made, developing the property, they are, in fact, the homeowners association. So that's important for viewers to know. All right, Bob. Meanwhile, Janet from Porter writes, Bob, I read and love your book. My brother is a victim of identity theft. What can people do to prevent identity theft? You know, uh, guys, this is going to a level anymore. I, I can't tell you how many people that I see and how many people that email about identity theft. First of all, it's always harder for the victim to fix it than those who stole. So, I've said this before, check your, e uh, check your credit reports every six months to see what happens. If there's anything on there that shouldn't be on there. If, in fact, you travel, let your credit card companies know you're traveling. I change my security codes every time I travel out of state with my credit card so that I know and I have no problem with a retailer or somebody having to call in to check and make sure I am who I am. The most important thing is if in fact you are a victim, notify immediately your bank, your credit card companies, all people that you have extended credit in order to protect your position. And reversing the identity theft, Steve, is not easy. It's very diligent. You don't necessarily have to run to get a lawyer, but many times that's how it ends up. Okay, Henry has a real estate question. He lives in Massachusetts, or I guess he lives in Massachusetts. Maybe he has yeah. a house down in Florida as well, but he says, we live on a beach in the Diamond District, which is in Fort Myers, Florida. The house is 115 years old. We have fixed it up to modernize it. It doesn't seem to sell any direction. Maybe there's a Diamond District in Massachusetts. Maybe there is. Wait. Yeah, it's in, Mass it's in Massachusetts. I'm sorry, I should have been clear on paraphrasing that email. Bottom line is, uh, when, you, when you have a historic home, you better get the right realtor that understands how to move that kind of home. Never touch the outside of that home, because that's the historic part of it. Even though he modernized the inside of the home, believe it or not, this is a special buyer for a special home. You've got to study the area and make sure you get the right realtor to market this type of asset. All right, not to be confused with the Diamond District on that street. On yeah, we can see it from here. <laughs> All right. Hey, by the way, uh, we'd like to remind folks the Property Man will be back on Fox News Channel Saturday.